said that there was two point three trillion dollars unaccounted for in right. the Pentagon budgets. The very next day, the accountants and all the evidence for where that two point three trillion dollars were taken out by whatever hit the Pentagon. Right, I saw that. I saw that uh, the contents of the. Uh uh, oil tr uh, building number seven as well. Oh, and that's another one, the most heavily secured building in history, and it and it's d taken down with controlled demolition. That's where we get the, you know, we jump to the idea it was an inside job because there's no way Al Qaeda or any foreign group could have gotten to these buildings to set the explosives in them, and that takes months and months of planning. So it's not something you can do in the afternoon like they implied was done with Building 7. Oh, the fire department decided it was dangerous and it was going to come down, so we we brought it down. Right, right. So, you know, after you look at all the evidence, uh, 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 it pretty pretty much cl clearly points to an inside, either a, a government-backed job. And, you know, and, of course, you know, the Muslims are saying, you know, it was the Jews and the... <laughs> And, and well, then it, you know, then it's the, you know, gotta hate whoever controls religious... the government. But you know, we're, you know, we've got a pretty much. Uh, I get to this point. It, it was, uh, you know, it's got to be the government. Well, you know, there's plenty of evidence that suggests that the security agencies all around the world knew about it. If they didn't participate, they at least knew. And Mossad is one of them. Um, you know, and there's plenty of negative things you can say about Israel. Every time you try, you get called an anti-Semite, though. And I want to point out that if you say anything bad about a Muslim, you're an anti-Semite, too. Because that's another Semite group. And well, people don't you, understand you know, the use of their language. I, I understand. But I used to live in... Uh, here there. <laughs> I used to live overseas uh, in back in the 60s. And we used to make propaganda films, uh, you know, just to shock <laughs> the bejesus out of, uh, out of people in the, uh, in the mainland. Right here you're in talking the about States. for the government? Uh, yeah, my, my dad was in the military, and we used to film, and, you know, basically you just you just make it look like chaos. Uh, you know, there's a show running right now that I sponsored just by coincidence called Psywar, P-S-Y-W-A-R. It's running on cable access, showed last night, by the way. And just by coincidence, it talks about the propaganda and the use of it ever since right around World War One up through the present, including use against unions. Okay, well, I understand all this. <laughs> And I, you know, I understand that you know we we do things like this, but you know something on on this magnitude was just, uh, uh, un, you know, unthinkable, and and you can't uh, really uh, believe the government would actually uh, you know do something this big, and then well, right, and you don't want to believe it either, but you know somehow we've got to explain then why did the government get involved in covering this up? What possible explanation could they have for at every turn they covered it up? In fact, they didn't even allow the investigation until the family members sued for it in 2004 is when they started the investigation. That is ridiculous. Every well, other... you want me to you want you want my take on it? Sure. Before 9/11, uh, of course, you know, right after Oklahoma City bombing, you know, they prayed and they looked for every Muslim or dark-skinned guy, and they broke their heart when they didn't find, when they <laughs> found Timothy McVeigh, which was one of their own, so to speak. And the patriotic movement was so big and so much more dangerous than, uh, and the destruction was coming from within this country. And it was much cheaper to take the, the battle overseas and and create and you know sacrifice basically what four thousand people, if that. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm listening. And and create you know what was the, the total cost uh, in dollars of this nine uh, eleven? Probably under fifty billion. I have no idea. Okay, twenty billion for the World Trade Centers and let's say a couple of airliners and you know and and, and a bunch of witness protection deals to you know house the uh, people who know and keep their mouths shut. Let's say it's fifty billion or less. It's a lot easier. It was a lot cheaper that way than to uh, fight the uh, the patriotic movement, where every everybody had a gun and had a possibility of overthrowing a government or a regime change, just like uh, like they do overseas in, in Egypt or or Libya. And so this was much cheaper, much more effective program to do that. I mean, I, that's the best explanation I have. Well, that might be okay, ex except that it assumes that there were some sort of patriotic group that did Oklahoma City and I don't know if you've done your homework but that was the US government right there too they were testing to see if they could blow up something and get away with it 
And if you take a look at the footage from that, you'll see that there were three other bombs after the initial explosion that were removed from the building. If the bombs were in that building, that was an inside job too. And the Trade Center 93 attack of the World Trade Center, that was another FBI plot. And the Arab patsy that was setting it up and organizing it was smart enough to record their FBI handlers, and that made it, you can get that on YouTube also. Well, well I, I understand the FBI, they need no but bad the FBI guys to ordered job the, and, and Wait a minute, the, the FBI ordered the bombing of the 93, in 1993, of the World Trade Center that didn't bring it down, but that was an FBI bomb and an FBI plot and an FBI order to bring it down. So if they would do that then, and if they did Oklahoma City, why on earth drag your feet about 9-11? And you, you might have been blown away about the things I just said, but when you go look, you'll find out that those are true. Yeah, okay, well, I, I, uh, it's, I'm It's just scary. And, we're, you know, pretty soon the, the chaos, now they've stopped doing it secretly, and they've admitted that this chaos is a scheduled chaos to get us to beg for a new government to, to make us safe and secure and a new currency to pull us out of this economic doldrum. And... Uh, you know, who's benefiting from this? The bankers. And it sounds like the wildest hand-waving, but follow the money. The bankers are making money hand over fist in all this stuff. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, whoever's uh, watching or keeping up with this stuff, they're, they're actually having to close their eyes and stick their head in the sand because the co there's consequences to this truth that you're bringing forth. That's the other part that people say, it, you're it, not getting this out you because you realize the truth what is it's so terrible. Do. You know, when, if this is all, let's say, if everybody accepts that this was a big lie, like WMD. Yeah. I think that we don't have to prove it. It's going to prove it to, you know, pretty soon that everybody's going to understand. Uh, you know, the world understands. The Americans haven't got the clue yet. But well, there's going to be, you know, that, that's going to be a, a tough day when... Uh, now, I, I look at it like I'm along for the ride. There's nothing I can do or not do that's going to make much difference to my, quote, survival in the event of something bad. I'm... The only thing that will let us all survive is if we get common sense and, you know, re sanity. Anything else, you know, all these scenarios about stockpile food and guns and everything else, that's nonsense. If you have to do that, we've already lost. Well, yeah, you have the wisdom to that because, you know, what's, what's, what's the remaining part of your life? Uh, let's say 15 Exactly, yeah, I'm 16 years old. Yeah, I mean, I'm for a young person who's, who's, who's getting stuck with this uh, <laughs> bill... Or this sin. Oh, yeah, that I don't envy. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty <laughs> tough. I mean, somebody's got 40 more years of work in life, or, you know, uh, a, a, that's pretty tough. So it's easy, you know, it's easy for you to bring forth the truth, or me, or, you know, somebody I, yeah, in our age bracket. I'm just about checking out. I'm at the point now where all I can do is look back and say, well, you fools, you know, and I'm pissed off that you didn't let peace happen before I got, you know, before I checked out, but... Anyway, thanks, caller. Okay, thank Our next you. show's on the right, 19th. Call back then, and we'll see you. Uh, uh, keep it up. You know, I, 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 let me tell you, I, uh, I was thinking about I ran into a little bit of a windfall. I was thinking about giving it to some of the, to the church to help them finish up uh, the building project. Right on. But now I think I'm going to have to uh, give it more to, uh, you know, this 9-11 conspiracy thing. Well, I'd check out Richard Gage's website, uh, ae911truth.org. That's the architects and engineers. That's that's this other shirt I got on here. You can't really see, but that's the architects and engineers logo. You know, and, 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 uh, and you, you know, it's because the church wasn't allowed to uh, speak out against the war or anything political like this when all this was going on. Right on. Hey, well, we're running short of time. Thank, Thank you, you caller. Bye -bye. And uh, there's one issue that I wanted to bring up. You know, statistically, the credibility of the people talking to you, talking heads on the TV, uh, I'm an old guy. I'm not dressed up in a suit. My credibility, just from that, without knowing anything else, is lower than the credibility of somebody wearing a suit, no matter what they had to say. Furthermore, if you're a good-looking younger woman, then your credibility, no matter what you say, is more credible than something a, an older guy in a suit would have. To, to, to make this uh, story come to some sort of conclusion that you can understand, what I want, if you know somebody out there who has an uh, outgoing personality, a good-looking lady who would like to be a star on TV, we'll start writing some decent scripts and letting her do the news, the 9-11 news. And I'll just do the organizing in the background and let somebody else who's 
you know, people would like to watch, talk about 9-11, and see if we can't bring up some of the awareness of, of what's going on. You know, if, get people to watch because of the sex thing, like, like every other place does, and then the news will sink in following, I hope. I don't know. In the meantime, uh, we were talking about Bush and all that. This, this is Greg Pallast's uh, DVD, The Bush Family Fortunes. You can see that on YouTube also, or you can get it. And man, that tells a lot about the Bush family. Um, the Greg, that's another thing. Greg Pallas kind of blows my mind. You know, he's such a great reporter on the Venezuelan thing, the uh, Bush family fortunes. The 2004 cheated election that the gentleman caller was just talking about, or 2000, both of those were cheated. And, uh, you know, Greg Palace worked with uh, Beverly, what's her name, from Black Box Voting and all that. And yet Greg Palace is not a 9-11 truth supporter. I just don't get it. And maybe we can talk about that on one of our shows, why the celebrities that are supposed to be, you know, so hip and activist circles uh, don't seem to be supportive of 9-11 efforts. And with that, I guess we're about to run the credits here. You can watch this show again. After I post it every Saturday night, and you'll see it on Google or blip.tv. And, you know, hey, you could put that call through. We still have two minutes before we go out. But, uh, yeah, my channel on... YouTube is 251 Omega, and you'll get all the shows that I've posted to YouTube. Uh, it's funny, when they used to post, I posted my show my first year to Google, and I had thousands of viewers. Well, then they stopped having videos, and we posted to YouTube, and now I have hundreds of viewers. And somebody said, well, you should post to Blip also. And I posted to Blip and have dozens of viewers. So I guess it kind of tells you the hierarchy of the way things are going there. Um, here's the rerun times, the second and fourth Wednesdays and Fridays. So next week on Wednesday and Friday, you'll be able to see. Oh, we do have a call. Go ahead, call. You got one minute. You got one minute, caller. You got to turn it up. I don't hear you. Hey, guy, got to ask you something. Yeah, go all for it, quick. All the explosion that was going on, what are, did you really state that that was dynamite? Are you sure it wasn't the fuel? Well, we don't know what it airplane? was. Well, no, it wouldn't be the fuel because the fuel wasn't explosive, especially out in space like that. So that, that couldn't be. No, it was a, a definite explosion. And you saw two different examples, one where it changed the direction of the beam and the other one where the beam split, and then each one of those particles split again, and that's not fire. But uh, And besides that, the government even admits that all the fire was gone after the first 10 minutes after impact, and these collapses happened an hour later. So there was no more fuel involved whatsoever, especially no. in those. Well, thanks for calling, and we're off the air now. Next one's on the 19th. And see you then.